My name is Jackie Pallis. I'm a consultant neurologist in Oxford and professor in clinical neurology. And I run with colleagues a national service for NMO with a great interest also in MOGAD. My journey began in the late 1980s when I was involved in research in my senior gravis, and that sparked my interest in neuroimmunology and autoantibody diseases. In uh, around 2005, the Mayo Clinic discovered the antibody for NMO, and we were really fortunate because Angela Vincent and Paddy Waters in our team, who run a really good antibody assay service, set up one of the first APRON4 antibodies. A few years later, Paddy Waters and his team described how to increase the sensitivity and specificity of the MOG antibody assay. And this was also one of the first assays in MOG antibody that became available for clinical use. The most significant changes I've seen throughout my career is the availability of the disease-modifying therapies in multiple sclerosis, but also in NMO. When I first started out, there were no treatments, and now we have nearly 20 available for MS. These have a really big impact on relapses. It was really common previously for us to have patients on the ward needing treatment for their MS relapses, and now that's really uncommon. And these drugs also have an effect on disability. In my Etrans lecture, I'll recap the journey through the discovery of aquaporin 4 and MOG antibodies up to our understanding nowadays of these two diseases. I hope I'll demonstrate why we've moved so fast and I'll highlight some key differences between MS and NMOSD and MOGAD with the hope that some of these will give insights in the future into multiple sclerosis. I think in the coming years, we'll have better individualized therapies like we see in cancer with CAR T cell therapies and vaccines. Also, I think we'll be able to predict an individual's response to treatment, maybe by looking at biomarkers that reflect the underlying disease pathogenesis. And that in addition to improving their outcomes might give us some insight into heterogeneity. I also think we will be better at switching off the immune process with drugs that tolerize, and this will stop the disease, at least in some cases. My advice to young researchers and clinicians that are interested in this field is that there's a great unmet need in multiple sclerosis. Understanding the pathogenesis and impacting on progression so it's a really worthy area to get into.